Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm Bill Clark from Chemical Engineering at Purdue, and I'm here with uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Corwin Green, who's the administrator of our program. So we're pleased to have the opportunity to discuss the uh, Chemical Engineering Professional Master's Program at Purdue. And the format uh, will be, uh, I'm sure the slides won't take the entire 45 minutes, so we'll make sure to, uh, to leave some time for questions uh, and, and uh, any discussion that we might wanna have um, toward the end of the, of the session. So without further ado, uh, we will get started. First of all, just by way of overview, uh, really this is a program that was started several years ago that is designed to, to supplement your undergraduate education, which uh, does that by uh, really offering a curriculum that not only uh, advances your knowledge in the technical chemical engineering realm, but also prepares you for uh, a, really a position in technical management with business courses and, and other opportunities throughout the program. So the, um, Really, the, one of the strengths of the program is, in addition to what I just mentioned, is the fact that uh, it's part of Purdue University. And as you probably are aware, uh, Purdue U University is one of the elite uh, public research institutions in the country, and it's particularly well known for its College of Engineering. And you can see, uh, just as an example, uh, recent rankings from the Wall Street Journal uh, had Purdue among public institutions in, in the top 10. And uh, a couple of other comments uh, about Purdue in general is that we, um, for the past several years, our president, Mitch Daniels, has been very focused on making uh, education more affordable for students. And even with the quality of particularly an engineering degree from Purdue, uh, we, as an institution, there's not been a tuition increase for undergraduates for the past, uh, I believe it's now seven or eight years, uh, several years in a row. And that's uh, really uh, based on the efforts of of Mitch Daniels, our president and, and others. So there's really been a focus on maintaining affordability here at Purdue. And that's, again, despite the fact that when you graduate from our institution, uh, it, you're, you're coming out of an engineering program that's, that's world-class. Uh, just a, as an example of, uh, and kind of a testimony to the, uh, the measures that Mitch Daniels and his colleagues have taken at the administrative level, I mean, I'm sure you're well aware that the effect of the pandemic on college enrollments across the country. Well, in fact, uh, Purdue's uh, freshman undergraduate class that just started uh, in August of this year, actually uh, our, our undergraduate class is 10% larger than the 2019 incoming cohort. Uh, so that's very rare that uh, an institution this for this year uh, can can have that, that kind of increase in size. And furthermore, uh, our specifically our undergraduate College of Engineering program has actually increased about 30% over the past couple of years, in, including a large increase uh, just, just for this incoming freshman engineering class. So all these are testimonies really to the efforts of of uh, our, our administration, especially uh, President Daniels, uh, again, to offer the combination of a quality uh, undergraduate degree, particularly in engineering, uh, and uh, to be able to do that in, in an affordable way. So just a few more words about uh, Purdue and specifically the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering. We have a large, uh, undergraduate and PhD program, or our undergraduate program uh, currently has, and this would be for, for uh, the classes in the years two, three, and four, so sophomore, junior, and senior years, 
total enrollment is about 600 students. Uh, our students do very well in the market um, when, when they graduate, as you can see from the slide. Uh, our PhD program also is very successful, one of the larger programs in the country. Our current enrollment is about a, a 130 students. And again, just to demonstrate the, uh, the uh, recognition that our College of Engineering has received both at the undergraduate and the graduate level, these are the most recent rankings from US News and World Report uh, and also, it's well known that in addition to having a, a very large international student population, uh, we're recognized a, a, as being uh, one of the institutions at the very top in terms of uh, preferences among international students. So uh, this is a, a, just a brief overview, and then, uh, you might have some questions toward the end. Uh, not only about the professional master's program, but about Purdue uh, and other aspects of the, of the Davidson School of Engineering, which we can get back to. So to get to the program, uh, the, first of all, we'll discuss uh, students who have an undergraduate degree in chemical engineering. And if you look at the, the demographics of our program, about two thirds of the students entering our program have a chemical engineering undergraduate background and about a third of students have a, a non-chemi background, which is primarily uh, in chemistry. So a typical, this is just an example and, and we'll talk about the, the concentrations that we offer, but uh, this would be an example of a student who's chosen, who, excuse me, has chosen uh, biochemical engineering as uh, his or her uh, uh, concentration or focus. So the, um, the curriculum would look something like this shown on the slide where first semester as a one of the two chemical engineering core courses, it would either be a statistics course or an engineering mathematics course. And you can see the other components uh, courses uh, in the first semester, there would be a so to speak, business type course. Uh, I will mention that uh, we now are also offering a marketing course within the department. This particular example is showing uh, a course, a marketing course that's offered through our, uh, through Purdue's business school, Cranert School of Management. But we also offer, and we expect this will be the the uh, predominant and uh, eventually the exclusive marketing course that students take in the professional master's program. Uh, that's just, that just started last year. And as I mentioned, we, we expect it will um, become the, the sole marketing offering. And it's really a little bit more focused on uh, engineer, or excuse me, marketing considerations specifically for or specifically from a, an engineer's perspective. So a little less emphasis on consumer marketing, a little more emphasis on other aspects that, that are of interest to, specifically to an engineer who's going to become a technical manager. And then the, the rest of the first semester would typically be, be comprised of uh, two elective courses uh, from the concentration list shown below. Uh, and then the second semester, all students uh, would, would take uh, a transport course and all students would take a, another so-called business course that's offered within the, the uh, chemical engineering department. And that's a, a course called financial analysis and, and management of projects. And we're very fortunate to have a continuing lecturer in our department uh, by the name of, of uh, Michelle Chutka. She has both a bachelor's and a master's in chemical engineering from the University of Michigan. And uh, she uh, is the director of product engineering at Cook Biotech, which is a medical device company that's based here in, in West Lafayette. So she runs that course uh, and really provides an excellent uh, real world perspective on uh, what an engineer really needs to know at, in terms of, of financial analysis, things like uh, time value of money, net present value, those kinds of things, and also uh, project management. And then 
Uh, a second uh, business course would be uh, shown here again now, at least as of now, taken through our um, our uh, Cranert School of Management. And then finally, uh, rounding out the spring semester would be another uh, would be another elector from the list below. The uh, final aspect of the program is the summer capstone course, which is six credits, as you can see. We'll talk further uh, about that, but the total number of credits for the course then becomes uh, 30 for graduation. Now, if a student uh, has a non-chemical engineering uh, background as an undergraduate, there are uh, some courses that have to be taken to, uh, to bring such a student, if, if you will, up to speed. So uh, in the first semester or increasingly, uh, students are, have the opportunity to take uh, the, the basic uh, material balance course in, uh, even before he or she enrolls. So in other words, in the summertime before the beginning of the, of the fall semester. So that would, uh, that would be an opportunity that, that certainly you might want to look into uh, if, if you uh, do have interest in, in enrolling in our program. So that would be uh, one of the, if you will, the catch up courses. Otherwise, um, you can see the rest of, this, of the first semester of the fall semester is similar to uh, a chemical engineering undergraduate in the sense that there's an additional chemi core course along with uh, a, uh, a, a uh, concentration select, uh, selection for an elective. Uh, and then in the spring semester, there's an additional uh, catch-up course in, in the sense, or excuse me, two catch-up courses in, in terms of separations and reaction engineering. Uh, and then the rest of, of the curriculum looks fairly similar to, to what a chemical engineer undergraduate would take. Uh, and then finally, uh, in addition to the capstone six credit course in the summer, similar to what the chemical engineering undergraduate students would take, then in the fall semester, uh, there would be uh, a management course. Again, this in the future will be offered within the department and then a couple of, uh, of electives taken from the, uh, the list below. Again, using the example of, of biochemical engineering as the concentration. So th this is uh, the list of, of uh, concentrations that are available. Uh, the, the most recent uh, additions to the concentration list includes uh, data science, which just began in fact this year. And then the second one is uh, gas and petroleum. The gas and petroleum uh, concentration is actually offered in conjunction with a program at Purdue Chemical Engineering called CSTAR. CSTAR is a um, initiative that is funded by the National Science Foundation and it's something called an Engineering Research Center, or ERC. So Purdue is the chemical engineering is the lead institution for that. That uh, the other institutions that are participating include uh, Northwestern University, University of Notre Dame, University of Texas Austin, and University of New Mexico. So this is a really uh, very good program, good opportunity for students because it, it, this is really a, a, a collaboration between academic institutions and several companies and the companies, several of the companies that are affiliated with CSTAR also participate in our uh, capstone program that, that we'll discuss it, uh, here in a little bit. So uh, again, data science and, and the CSTAR gas and petroleum uh, concentrations have, have are relatively new opportunities for students in the program. Uh, the, our GRE scores uh, are very competitive, as you can see, with uh, at least once you get beyond the, the, the elite uh, chemical engineering PhD programs around the country, uh, the, the GRE scores are, are very competitive with most chemical engineering PhD programs ar around the country. And, and that 
certainly uh, we're very proud of that. And it's, it's a testament, testimony to the caliber of the students uh, that we get. Uh, going back to the capstone program now, uh, many, stu many students who go through the program really consider this to be the highlight uh, of, the, of the time that they spend at Purdue. And the purpose is, is, is really to provide uh, a transition uh, from the first part of the program, which is obviously focused on uh, academic learning, with, and, and then the transition then allows uh, students to get into the mindset then of entering into industry. And uh, essentially what our program does, and our, as we'll discuss further, our program is very unique it allows students the, the opportunity to, to partner with a company uh, and specifically a mentor in that company during the course of, of the project. And the important thing is uh, the assignments that students receive uh, are not just, so to speak, make work as part of, of the, the capstone program. These are, these are assignments that that the companies and the mentors give that oftentimes result in uh, actionable uh, outcomes for the companies. In other words, uh, for example, a company may incorporate the findings from, uh, from one of the capstone programs into an R&D program, or they may make a decision to make an investment in a certain project based on the findings from uh, one of the capstone projects uh, performed by uh, our students. So these are these are very real world assignments that that have important implications for the companies that uh, with, with whom we're working. So the timeline for the capstone program is we typically get our industry partners finalized early in a particular year. Uh, and then once that process is done uh, and they have provided us with uh, project statements, we send those out to students in the late February, March timeframe so, so that they can then review those and, and rank from a priority perspective, which uh, projects uh, look the most desirable to them. Of course, the students tend to align their preferred projects with uh, the concentration that, that they've chosen. Uh, in April then uh, of a particular year, the, the projects are matched to the students. Again, we try to align uh, concentrations uh, and, pro and, and projects in, in terms of the students' choices. And then the actual project begins in the middle of May and runs until the end of July when uh, oral presentations and written reports are done, basically summarizing uh, the work that, uh, that's been done. And this is a, a list of the companies that participated in our capstone prog uh, program just this past uh, summer semester. And uh, as you can see, this is uh, covering a very broad spectrum of the various uh, subsector, excuse me, subsectors within chemical engineering, we were very fortunate to have such a uh, a wide array of opportunities for for students. Uh, everything from the chemical industry to the pharmaceutical industry to the medical device industry uh, and the oil and gas industry, and really everything in between. So the students really had uh, great options this past. Uh, summer in terms of selections for their capstone projects and really allowed a very nice opportunity to align their concentration choices with particular uh, projects. And these are just examples of some, of some surveys that we've done uh, after students have completed their capstone projects. Uh, overall, the feedback has been very positive and you can see some of the comments uh, at, uh, below. And, and again, I would, uh, I would just emphasize that uh, these are, are, are real world projects that really do a great job of preparing students for entering the real world where, uh, and, and really what I mean by, by real world projects is that 
as opposed to, to maybe uh, what's happened in, in, in your undergraduate experience where projects are assigned oftentimes in a fairly directed way. Um, oftentimes the projects, the way they're assigned in the capstone project, it, it, they're, they're very open-ended and, and that's uh, quite purposeful in the sense that the, this is the kind of project or assignment that you're going to get in the real world where um, oftentimes there are big unknowns and there are a lot of gaps that have to be filled uh, in, in along the way. So the students have, have really uh, reported that this is a, a very positive aspect. It's a, and a very good learning experience. Now, uh, what we mean by self-reported outcomes is that obviously when um, Mr. Green, our, our coordinator, uh, performs these uh, surveys after students have graduated, it's, it's not 100% compliance in, in terms of answering them. So the data that are shown here are a reflection of just the students who have actually uh, completed the surveys. And typically, that's been on the order of about 70%, 70% of students who have gone through the program. So not surprisingly, because this is a professional master's program, uh, somewhere between 80 and 85% of students over the years have chosen to uh, go directly into industry. And, and I will say at this point, just as a, as a, a, a sidebar comment, is that we do have a, a significant percentage uh, of students who have already had some industry experience. So in other words, they are not coming directly from an undergraduate program, but instead have worked for uh, some time in an industry setting and have decided to come back and get their advanced degree to uh, further their, their uh, skills and also further their opportunities. So uh, the, the students who are departing our program, some of them are actually re-entering industry and, and have followed that pathway. But so going back to the point I was making, not surprisingly, the, the vast majority of students uh, go, go directly into industry and about uh, 15 or 20% of students over the past several years have gone on to get uh, an advanced degree. We, we uh, are not a program that is designed to prepare uh, students for going on to, to get a PhD degree. Uh, that's, that's not the primary intent of the program. But having said that, if a student does declare an interest in going on and, and uh, attaining a PhD degree, uh, then we are perfectly willing to work with that student and, and uh, help lay the groundwork for that particular pathway. So the, this is, these are the, again, these are the self-reported data. And um, the, again, based on the, uh, these data, the placement is actually very good. Sometimes, especially with our international students, it takes a few months uh, for them to get uh, kind of locked in, if you will, with a position in the market. But certainly uh, after six months from the date of graduation, nearly all students are gainfully employed, uh, at least of those who have, have uh, responded to the, the, the survey. And, and these are the, again, the self-reported data for salaries, uh, very nice, uh, increases uh, over time. The, the most recent data that we have had a chance to evaluate are from uh, August of 2019. And the, the average salary at that point was $82,000 starting salary for, uh, for the students who uh, graduated from the program. These are just examples of companies, certainly not an exhaustive, exhaustive list. There are many, many more companies that students uh, have, who have graduated from the program have, have gotten uh, positions with. And these are just also shown on the slide are examples of, of positions and titles that, that uh, graduates uh, have received as their if you will, entry-level position in the industry. So as you can see, a, a wide variety of positions and a wide variety 
of different types of companies, again, spanning the, all the different sectors, or excuse me, subsectors within chemical engineering, as is the case with uh, the, the companies that participate in our uh, capstone program. So uh, the final slide here is, is just to, to wrap up, is, is just to emphasize, although there are several chemical engineering professional master's programs that are being offered now, we were, it's fair to say, one of the legacy programs along with uh, Carnegie Mellon and Cornell, uh, which uh, we, we consider to be our, our, um, our primary, so to speak, competitor. So if you look at some of the other programs uh, that, that there also are very good programs at, at a number of other institutions, including Columbia, uh, Johns Hopkins, uh, MIT, the, the practice school is, is an excellent program, along with some, with some other uh, institutions. But we feel that there are a number of uh, differentiating factors that uh, really uh, make us very distinctive. First of all, we are the only public institution that offers uh, a, a, a chemical engineering professional master's uh, program that operates on the scale that, that we have. Secondly, um, we have a faculty that consists of, of uh, more than 30 members. And because of that large faculty size, that's really what allows us to, to offer such a, a wide variety of opportunities to students in terms of uh, their concentrations. Uh, and also because our faculty collaborate with companies across all the subsectors within chemical engineering, this is also opening up um, opportunities in terms of capstone uh, research projects and also uh, employment opportunities upon graduation. Uh, thirdly, uh, we believe that the, the three required management or so-called business courses are, are really, really critical in, in terms of preparing students to become technical managers. We, we believe that our program finds the right balance between, again, advancing your technical chemical engineering knowledge, but at the same time, uh, exposing you to uh, business principles, including operations and marketing, that really uh, set a, a very nice foundation, established a very nice foundation, again, to, to become, uh, for you to become a technical manager. Uh, fourthly, we believe that the, the time frame over which the program runs is very, is very efficient. Uh, and as I was mentioning, for an undergraduate chemical engineering uh, student, uh, this can all be, this program can all be compressed into one calendar year. And, and again, with the reasonable tuition that I was mentioning before, consistent with the philosophy of Purdue University, this is a very efficient process uh, that, that, that really is offered in, in our program. And then finally, Again, uh, I'll emphasize one more time that the, the majority of students really consider the capstone experience to be the highlight of, of the uh, Purdue Chemical Engineering Ma uh, Professional Master's Program. And we are very unique and, and really in a, in a class by ourselves along with uh, MIT in, in offering this type of opportunity to students uh, going through the program. So uh, with that, I'll close. And, and before opening it up for uh, any questions you might have, I'll just uh, turn to my colleague, uh, Mr. Corwin Green, who's our course, or, or excuse me, program administrator, and ask if he has anything uh, more to add or share from his perspective. Um, thanks for that. Um... I don't really have anything to add to the presentation. I think Dr. Clark covered everything um, from our end that we like to present to prospective students. So thank you for that, Dr. Clark. Um, I do want to, earlier on, there was a question from Jabril um, 
you asked if this could be done online. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to the program and the question or the answer to that, Jabril, is that um, the program is a residential on-campus program. So we do not have an online option at this point in time. Um, but aside from that, I don't have anything to add to the presentation. So I think we can go ahead and turn it over for questions. I see some coming through in the chat already. Um, so I will try to field those now. Um, from Marissa, are there any PMP graduates who go into R&D immediately afterwards without getting another degree? Um, Dr. Clark, I think you probably would be best to speak on this. Yes, it's a good question. And I did, I, I did allude to um, the, the, and by the way, I, I, I'm assuming that you are uh, referring to R&D in an academic environment or, uh, or are you referring to R&D in, in an industry setting? Maybe as I read your question, you're probably referring to R&D in, a, in, a, in an industry setting. So yes, it's, um, I would say that is not the, the typical pathway, but we have had a few students who have been able to uh, procure R&D positions uh, with, with various companies. But I, I would emphasize that um, it, it's a little bit difficult competitively uh, or from a competitive perspective, because obviously that's the primary type of position that a, a, a PhD um, graduate would, would really be entering into rather than a professional master's graduate. But again, it has occurred in the past, uh, but not as frequently as, as positions like uh, a project engineer uh, in, uh, in areas like manufacturing and, and other fields like that. I hope I answered your question. Okay, so another question from Ratika. Um, approximately what percentage out of those seeking employment after the PMP program have already worked in industry and are re-entering? And Corwin, you may, you may uh, be able to take a shot at this too. I don't have that exact number, but my guess is it's somewhere on the order of 20%. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would say anecdotally, we like we don't track necessarily that um, particular statistic, but just anecdotally from reviewing applications over each admissions cycle, um, I would say 80 to 90% of our students are coming from their undergraduate program um, with um, 10 to 20% of students either returning from um, industry or from another graduate program. You're welcome. Any other questions? I think there was a, Corinne and Ashley, I think there was a question about uh, getting a hold of the slides because somebody joined a little bit late. And I, I think Ashley explained that they, they should be available uh, afterwards. Yes, yeah, the session is being recorded and as, as Ashley noted, um, the information for those sessions will be sent out to all attendees. So you, you should be able to access the recorded uh, presentation after the fact. Well, uh, if there aren't any other questions or, or comments that you may have, uh, we, I speak for Corwin and Ashley in saying thanks very much for joining this. And certainly if you have any questions uh, that we might be able to answer in the future as you start making decisions uh, with, with your career profession, or excuse me, progression, please uh, get a hold of us that our email addresses are on the title slide. So uh, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, and we wish you the best of luck as you, uh, as you make those decisions along the way. And we certainly would hope to see you in the fall of 2021 uh, in the, in the uh, Purdue Chemical Engineering uh, Professional Master's Program. Yes, thank you all for attending. Um, again, just to reiterate what Dr. Clark said there, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. You can find our contact information on our website as well. Um, I will be sending each of you a follow-up email so that you have it um, uh, readily available too. So if you have any other questions, um, please keep in, in contact and, and let us know if we can help.